All right, guys, Nomus RC back again. I just kind of wanted to uh, talk about uh, ESC programming because I got this used. I have no idea what they have said on this, governor-wise. Uh, I've actually gotten helicopter uh, ESCs that are set for airplane. Maybe they defaulted the settings. I don't know what they did, um, but it wasn't even set for heli, and so you had no soft start or anything like that. So you always want to plug them in and check out their settings, right? So the unfortunate thing about our current technological advances in the RC world uh, is that you have to do almost everything on your computer, right? Radio is completely computerized. Your flight controller is completely computerized. And how are you gonna make it interact with your computer, right? You're gonna need some type of a program cable. So the unfortunate thing that I was saying is that you're gonna wind up with all of this kind of stuff, right? So for the Spirit devices, because I use so many of them, obviously I have a ton of these USBs. And then in the field, I can actually plug this in and I can broadcast my Spirit devices as a Wi-Fi. Just gets a 192 IP and then I can connect to it. And then I open up the software on my phone and modify it. So here is the one that we're actually going to have to use, right? Because this is a castle. Phoenix Ice 2. So we're going to have to use the Castle Link. Um, and then this is a Contronics ESC programmer, right? Contronics is very specific. Uh, just moving the ESC from one helicopter to another, sometimes it won't even uh, boot up correctly. You have to wind up defaulting it. Um, and here we have another. This is actually one that I got. I got a Scorpion from a guy. And it had no soft start. And it was really annoying. So obviously I wanted to dig into it, figure out. So I ordered the Scorpion Link. And lo and behold, it was set as an airplane. And changed it to Heli, turned on the governor, boom, done. Uh, we have Spectrum. So we have a USB cable for uh, Spectrum flight controllers, uh, such as AS3X stuff. And then we have a Bluetooth, right? And then V-Bar, Mikado. So this will plug into the original V-Bars, not the Neos, and it will broadcast Bluetooth. And then I can link my phone to it, pull up the uh, app, and make all my adjustments. So this program card is actually for Flycolor. Uh, so I have a couple of ESCs that are for boats, that use this, right? And I needed it because I needed to adjust their slow start and punch settings and stuff like that. And then the most widely used one that I have is the Hobby Wing one, which is really nice. Um, it's actually got an aluminum case. Uh, it's a lipo checker whoop, right there. And uh, you can update its firmware and all that good stuff. Uh, but this is probably my most often used because Hobby Wing is my most... Uh, often used ESC. So again, this is just kind of the stuff that you're going to wind up eventually accumulating. And the reason that you do is exactly this. I'm not going to install this thing and get everything up and running and do all this stuff. And then it's not even programmed correctly. So let's go ahead and plug it in and boot up the Castle Link software and see where we're at. All right. So we got our Castle Ice 2 HV right here. Um, we got some batteries to, to power it. The Castle Link is plugged in. Uh, it's plugged in USB to the computer. So you can actually do all that, um, and then it'll set up your device and your device manager and all that good stuff. But it will not actually show up in the software until you connect a battery to this. So let's go ahead and boot up the software. Castle link right here. And then we will drag that over here. All right, so now that we got the Castle link software open, uh, you can see that it says USB connected, but no device linked. So we will actually go ahead and plug in this battery real quick. And immediately you will see the little castle link start uh, flashing green and yellow instead of just red. right? And it will actually detect and tell you what you plugged in. So it sees that we have the Phoenix Ice HV. right? Uh, we come over here to the throttle tab. And it actually does look like it is in helicopter governor mode. Um, throttle response is set, um, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if these are defaults, right? 
I'm sure that he adjusted something. Uh, brake, cutoffs, motor, etc. So we're actually going to go ahead and default this. Because you just never know what settings that somebody had. And they may not be compatible with what you're trying to do. So we will just set defaults. It's updating. Say OK. Now we'll come back here. So the defaults are on airplane. We would want to do helicopter and governor mode. Right. And then we'll just leave all this stuff default. Brakes cut off. Motor. So cutoff is at 3.2 per cell. I'm actually going to bring that down to 3 volts. Uh, soft cutoff, yes. Motor, start power, motor timing, we're not going to mess with any of that stuff. Uh, other, logging. Uh, logging is nice if you get into a crash or something. You can take a look and see what's going on. Uh, so now we're going to save. If you go down here to where we hit a defaults, you can actually say update. And this will send the settings to the device. And as soon as it says OK, you can click OK, and it's done. So we have went through it and reconfigured it for default application. And then we'll tune from there.